As much as we know about beading, and as long as beading has been around in this world, in this universe, there are still new things to discover and learn and invent even. And in the last couple of years, there have been several new stitches that have been invented, and there's a new one on the block. And it's kind of, it's being called peyote with a twist not crochet. Uh, the not crochet part is in there because it's a tubular peyote technique that really emulates the look of bead crochet. But you're doing it with peyote stitch and not with bead crochet. And there's so many people out there who really struggle to learn bead crochet. So this gives you the op opportunity to create a look that looks like that and not have to do all the bead crochet stuff. So what does it look like, right Jill? I happen to be wearing a couple of bracelets here that are both are done with peyote with a twist. And let me bring you in closer so you can see what I'm talking about here. So here's the bracelets. That, this one is done with size 8s. This one is done with size 11s. Um, I will show you in comparison to other peyote tubular techniques why this is a little bit different. I'm also going to show you why this strong diagonal in here is there. You do not have to have this in every bracelet. You can do very complicated patterns in this. I do suggest, however, that you learn this technique by using that strong diagonal line. I'm going to show you why here as we go along. Um, but it's a learning it like this, you can see you still make a perfectly gorgeous bracelet. And then once you are comfortable seeing the pattern of how you do the stitch, then you can take off and you don't have to worry about having that strong diagonal line there. Okay. So let me kind of take these off to the side here. Oop, I've got magnetic clasps on it. So they're attaching themselves together here. <laughs> uh, let me kind of show you this lineup of different kinds of tubular peyote techniques. This first one here is actually, it's not technically peyote. Uh, well, actually, I take it back. It is peyote. What I did is I created a flat strip of peyote like you would do with a um, peyote tube clasp. So it was a flat strip of peyote. And then I brought the ends together and zipped it back and forth. And so here, you can see that it's a very stiff piece. There's not a lot of movement in it, uh, which means that it's not great for doing bangles or that kind of thing because there's just not enough flexibility in it. It doesn't curve very well around your uh, wrist. But that's also why it's great for a toggle bar because it's nice and sturdy. One thing to notice uh, here is that the holes on the beads go up and down. So this is a vertical hole. All the holes you can kind of see here on the end, they're vertical. Okay, the next thing, this is tubular peyote stitch. And so this is a time-honored tradition. Um, I do have a video on how to do tubular peyote stitch, and I will pop a link up uh, in that eye up there in the corner to show you if you want to go check that out. But this is a tube. And tubular peyote stitch is very flexible, so it, it works nicely that way. It does tend to flatten down, so this piece is actually flattening on me. It's thick enough that it's kind of flattening down. I could insert some kind of uh, stuffing or filling in there if I wanted to to keep it, keep it its round shape. The other really important thing to notice here is that the holes in tubular peyote are horizontal. So they were vertical this way, and they're horizontal this way. So now let's bring in peyote with a twist. And notice how peyote with a twist, these holes are actually at a diagonal. Interesting, huh? And it's because of the way that you're working the stitch. It's also very flexible, which is nice. It holds its shape quite well. This is all very rounded. So it's a really, unique, very cool innovation. This stitch was created by my friend Gerlinde Lenz, who uh, she has actually, this is not the first stitch she's invented. She also invented a stitch called Diamond Weave. And she has very generously allowed uh, basically everybody to teach and use this technique and share the love of, as we all explore this new stitch, 
of peyote with a twist. So people, there is a group on Facebook that's called peyote with a twist, not crochet. So you can go and join that group on Facebook where everybody is sharing their insights as they play with this stitch. And I had decided to do a basics peyote with the twist video um, to show the basic technique. And then we will kind of walk you through how to use a pattern in the future. I will also do a future video on how to turn it, to join the two ends together into a bangle how you can use this technique and create a Cellini spiral, and all sorts of really cool new things as we are all um, in investigating and figuring out what the stitch can do. Um, okay, so here's what the stitch looks like. Let me get this stuff off to the side here. Here's what the stitch looks like in progress. And you can see that it kind of looks, the end here kind of looks almost like a cannoli. That's what I think of when I when I look at this is a little cannoli end. And when you're stitching, once we get it set up, when you're stitching, you're actually gonna be stitching up and down right here. And that's how you get those beads in a diagonal is that instead of stitching across here or stitching up, your stitching is actually sits at a diagonal as you stitch up and down. Very cool, huh? How do you start it? Well, let's, let's figure that out right now. All right you're actually gonna start it with a piece of flat stitching. Um, just like you would have if you were making a peyote tube toggle over here, that's how we're gonna start this out. And we're gonna start out with, uh, I'm gonna use the darker color as my accent color. And so I do want to pick up one of that, what's gonna be that stripe color. And then I'm gonna pick up eight of the main color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm gonna pick up one more of that accent color. So the accent color on both the, as the starting bead and the end bead. I'd already attached a little uh, stopper bead here, so I'm gonna bring those down. We're just gonna do regular peyote here, back and forth, until we have an odd number of rows. Now, if you've never worked a, p a patch like this where you wanted to keep the color on the outside edge, um, an accent color, then all you have to do is when, you're, when you get to that outside edge, your very first bead that you pick up is gonna continue to be that accent color because it's gonna sit right on top of the accent color right there. So you're skipping the accent color, passing through the next color to set up your peyote stitch. Oops, just one bead there, Jill. And you're just gonna remember that every time you do that first stitch on a new row, it's the accent color. All the other beads along this, this peyote piece are going to be your main color. Okay. Here's my last bead of this row. It's still uh, a main color bead, even though I'm attaching it by going in through that accent color. It's only when I'm picking up a bead that's gonna stack on top of the accent color that I want it to be the accent color. So there's that row done. I'll flip it so I can start my next row. And so here I am. First bead of the row is gonna be the accent color. And Every other bead in this row will be your main color. You're going to keep adding rows until you have a total, in this case, um, because we're, we're gonna work on the sample together, I'm gonna kind of dictate a little bit. Uh, you're gonna want to do 11 rows and let me get there and I will show you how you count rows.
have finished all my rows here. How do you know though, right? So here's how you're gonna count rows. You can count them on a diagonal. I find this very visually distracting. I always lose my line as I get go along. It's much easier for me to count two outside columns. And it doesn't matter whether you count the two on the right, the two on the left, just count two of them. So here, we're gonna start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. That means we've got 11 rows. That's perfect, that's exactly what we want. The other thing is notice that how I've got this oriented. I have my working thread down here on the bottom now and the tail thread up at the top. And then he here's where we're gonna fold this together into our little cannoli shape. We're coming all the way from this bottom corner up to the top sticky outy bead on the opposite edge. So this is kitty corner all the way across. And I'm not going to tighten yet. I just kind of want to show you the thread path before I tighten. So we went all the way up to that top corner bead. Now we're going to come all the way back down here again and grab that first sticky outy bead below where our thread was originally exiting out of the accent bead. So it's the first sticky outy main color bead. So it's like the world's weirdest thread path, right? Because you're going way up to one edge and way back down to the other edge. Now what's going to happen as we tighten these is it folds beautifully into the shape and then look what happens. That diagonal, that edge on one end now flows perfectly into the edge on the opposite side of that flat piece. And these two pieces are joined here. And then what we're gonna do is we're not gonna work on the side here that your tail thread's coming out of. You're actually gonna flip your piece over. And this is the side that we're gonna work on right here is where our peyote stitches are. So you can see we've got our up beads, we've got our down beads, and this is where we're gonna be doing peyote stitch back and forth. So all we have to do right here is start picking up our main color beads and peyoting up this side. The only time I'm gonna worry about that accent color bead is when I turn around on my next row. Let's get the tail out of there. Okay, so now I'm just gonna turn around and come back down. This is my gonna be my next row. And you can see that the first bead here that I pick up is gonna sit on top of that accent color. So I'm going to keep that going by picking up an accent color and then main color all the way down. I alternate back and forth with whether I keep holding this in a single orientation and just go up and down. Sometimes I will flip this so that even though I'm going back down towards the join, um, I'm beating away from myself. So I'm always beating in the same direction. It's, it's up to you whether you flip it or not flip it. Um, I'm going to go back to the not flipped to show you. This is where now as we come in here, we've got a spot right here to put, that we need to put a bead in. Where do we connect it? Well, we're going to connect it into the join bead that's right down here. You're, just, you're taking a regular peyote stitch. It's just that the bead is already there for, that, for the other. Uh, you're filling in, basically. So I picked up a, a main color. I'm going to go through the accent color that's there like so. And then we're just going to turn around to go in the other direction. So we're going to pick up the accent color that's right above where we were coming out of. And then we're also going to pass through the next, the, that last uh, main color that we just added. Now, as I did that, notice how it then pulls that bead up so that it's sitting halfway between the two accent colors here. And that's what we need for peyote stitch is so that so when you turn around just turning around is not enough you then have to go back through the bead that you just added and it centers it between those two accent beads and that's it ladies and gentlemen you're just going to keep doing that over and over again so let me do another round here for you with you so main color all the way up
as you turn around your first stitch going back the other direction is going to be that accent color because it's going to be sitting on top of the accent color uh, I tend to stitch this without any kind of dowel but if you wanted to you could use a dowel in the center here to kind of help uh, hold on to it especially at the beginning if you wanted and I've mentioned before I think the perfect thing to do for dowels is if you buy a inexpensive set of knitting needles of bamboo knitting needles you can get them for like I don't know six eight ten dollars on um, Amazon and it will have a whole size range of dowels that you can use uh, so I think that's the most cost-effective way is to use some bamboo knitting needles here we are at that funky join slash turn again. So I've got space for one more bead to sit here. So I'm going to pick up that bead. I'm passing through the accent bead that's straight ahead because it's basically it's just a that it's already there. I'm turning around by going through the bead above it plus the bead that I just added. So you can either do those one at a time or do them together. When you tighten brings that bead that you just added up in between those two so that it's centered and you're ready to do your next row. And you're just going to keep doing this over and over and over again until you get the length that you desire. Um, when we come back, what I want to show you next is how you're going to build up that V section so that you bring the end, the end to a single level basically and then how you're going to attach an end cap on top of it. Okay so now that you've got your length that you want let's go ahead and figure out how we're going to end this off. Let me bring you in. I don't know that this is even long enough to even count as a Barbie bracelet so um, but we're going to pretend. When what I want to do now is fill in this area here so that we have kind of a single level up at the top. We're going to do this by decreasing each time we do a row. And it's really, really easy to do this. So very first thing to do is we're going to do a regular row as we go up. And where we have been taking four stitches all the way up, we're only taking three, so that's my third. So now I want to turn around and come back down again. And the easiest way to turn around and come back down again is just to bring my needle underneath the thread that's already holding these two beads together. We're just going to kind of hook that thread so that I can immediately turn around and go through that bead again in the opposite direction works that we're coming out the sticky outy and then we'll bead down to the join area like normal. You're still going to do your little funky turnaround here so we're going to bead into the accent color bead through the accent color bead above it and the bead we just added. So last time we took three stitches up now we're just going to take two stitches up. So one Okay, the beads are trying to run away from me. Two. Okay, and we're going to hook under the threads there. Turn around so that we're coming out the most sticky outy one. We're going to finish that row. We're going to do a single one this time, like so. Hook the thread, come back in. So we're coming out the top sticky outy. And then we're going to fill in that spot right there. Do a normal turnaround. And then we still kind of have a little bit of a, a V right here. So what we're going to do is we're immediately going to pick up a bead and turn around and attach it in 
as if we were doing the turn the funky turnaround. So like so, up through so. Okay, so now we have this tapered end. We kind of have this guy kind of sitting up there, but what I like to do here is, um, you can kind of fill in any place there's a gap. There's a gap right here. I'm going to fill in one bead, but then I'm just going to bead around here. Connect these, join them all up. And then when I go through this guy, I can kind of bring him down. I'm going to actually skip this bead and because remember, this is all going to be under an end cap, so it doesn't have to look pretty and that kind of bends him in to the center there. And then you're just going to end off this thread. And, you know, adding an ending thread in peyote, diagonal peyote is just the same as working with any kind of peyote. You're wanting your thread to hide on the, in the intersections in between beads, but you want to go ahead and change directions several times as you do so. And if possible, you want to work back on your on itself. So here I'm crossing a previous intersection there. So now this is well and truly ended off, and I can cut the thread. Oops, try not to make the, throw that. And now I've got this beautifully tapered little end piece here. So go ahead and taper your ends. Um, you can use your tail thread on the opposite side to do this. So if you leave yourself a decent amount of tail thread, um, I'm gonna say like 12 to 14 inches should be enough for you to do this tapering on the side that you started out on. Then you don't even have to add a new thread to do that. Uh, and so taper both your ends. When we come back, I'm gonna show you about all about the end caps. All right, now that you've got your ends tapered, let's talk about end caps. I'm gonna bring you in close uh, to the hand cam here. Um, so I think these glue-in magnetic clasps are really a nice way to finish off these ropes. Uh, you certainly could do a beaded end cap. Um, I have done videos that include beaded end caps before. Um, I, right this second, I can't think of what it's called, but I will pop a link up to a video that shows how to create a beaded end cap. Um, if you're on a mobile device, just so you know, uh, all of the links are in the little eye up in the corner. And if you're on a mobile device, you have to hit the screen for that eye to show up. Because I, I get comments all the time from people saying, there is no eye. Just tap the screen and the eye will show up. Uh, and then you can tap the link. So anyway, so you could do a beaded end cap. Um, I really like these magnetic uh, closures, and they come in a variety of sizes. So even though, so with the, the size 11 seed beads, when you use the 10 beads around, which is what we did in our sample today, then a beaded end cap with an 8 millimeter interior diameter is perfect. So, but when they talk about interior diameter, what they're talking about is the measurement of right here, the inside part of the end end cap. Uh, the end cap itself will have a different kind of measurement because it's, you know, there's like a little rim on this and everything. So what you want to pay attention to is an interior diameter measurement. So this is the 8 mil and you'll notice that our little sample is going to fit in there perfectly. Um, with the larger piece that I did when I did this with size 8s, size 8 seed beads and, but I still did uh, 10 beads when I started out the flat section, then that fits perfectly into a 12 millimeter interior diameter. So I happen to use um, a style like the this, it's called the bamboo style, but this is also, you can tell they're all magnetic because they're they all sticking together, but this is also a 12 millimeter style, which looks really, really nice. Um, this one is an acrylic one, so it's super, super, actually all of the bamboos are plated metal, the bullet styles, and then this style is all acrylic, so it's a really lightweight option. The magnets are nice and strong, so I feel really comfortable with that as a magnet. 
So this is also a 12 millimeter uh, interior diameter that would work perfect for the eights. They also come in different sizes though too. So this one, I believe if I recall correctly is a 12.5 interior diameter. Um, this one I believe is a 15 millimeter diameter. So if you make much bigger ropes, there's options for you there too. Same thing, this is again a 15 millimeter inter interior diameter uh, on the bamboo clasp version. So you can, you know, make ropes of varying sizes and still use these. And so I just kind of wanted to show you those. I have laid in a sel selection of colors and sizes and styles uh, at jillwisemandesigns.com so that you can play with um, these and the rope itself. Now for actually attaching it, super simple. Let me get all of these little magnetic guys out of the way. I'll get you out of the way. Okay, phew. Oh, they, they were driving me crazy with all that attachment. This is a glue-in clasp. So all you have to do is is put some glue in that reservoir and then you will insert your bead rope. You want to make sure that it's going in pretty well. You don't want it to just kind of barely touch in because you want it to be inserted as far as it can go in so that as much glue is contacting as possible. What I will do is I will put um, a good dollop of glue in there I'll, and then I put the, the beaded section in and then I kind of smush it around. I, I, I'm moving this around. I'm making sure that the beads are getting nice and coated with the glue. I take it in and out a couple times to make sure everything gets coated with the glue. And then you're just going to let it sit there and you're going to leave it alone for 24 hours. That's assuming that you're using the E6000 glue. Now the E6000 glue is what I like to use with these. Uh, E6000 is a very, very secure glue. It is a toxic glue though, so you may, if you're chemically sensitive, you might want to do this outside. It has a very strong smell. But what I do is I do it really fast, and so it's really not that big of a deal. Um, and I don't really kind of want to glue this little tiny end into this one, but uh, you know, I would I would just take the, the end, the, t the cap off, squirt my glue in really quickly. And like I said, I, I would say I fill up maybe a third of the, the reservoir with glue. And then I immediately put the cap back on. And that way you're mitigating as much of the smell. And you're not even coming into contact with the glue at all because it's going straight inside the reservoir here. And then you're just using your beaded rope to kind of smush it around. You don't even have to use your finger or anything to get, um, to, to, to coat the beads or anything. And then like I said, for E6000, it takes 24 hours for a full cure. Uh, I would say within an hour or two, you can probably move it around and it's not gonna come out, but you don't really wanna wear it for 24 hours. You wanna go ahead and let it set and get as strong and hard as it's going to before you wear it. Uh, so it's a really simple, easy process to put these glue-in clasps on there. I think they're the way to go. Now, if you've got an oddball size that one of these clasps, the interior diameter doesn't work for you, then the beaded closure, the beaded end cap is the way to go. Uh, so I've got both options for you. And I hope you enjoy this technique as much as I have. Uh, it's really exciting to see a technique be born and grow and and morph into all sorts of different possibilities. So like I mentioned before at the beginning of the video, we are gonna cover some additional topics with this. How you do th this with a pattern where you're not using that strong uh, accent color when you're doing your turnaround. So we're gonna cover that. We're gonna cover how you're gonna, how to design your own patterns. Basically converting a crochet pattern, a bead crochet pattern into a um, peyote with a twist uh, pattern that is followable. Um, we're going to talk about all sorts of things with peyote with a twist and I hope you'll join me for the journey. In the meantime you can also join the Facebook group that is specifically for this technique and Gerlinde Lenz, the fabulous bead master extraordinaire who developed this, uh, is the administrator for that group and she is in there every single day and she is helping people as they're learning and growing with this technique. So I highly recommend uh, joining that group if this is something that you enjoy and you want to do more of and see what other people are doing with it. 
Peyote with a twist, not crochet, is the name of the group on Facebook. Happy beating!